In this video, you're going to learn how you can massively reduce the cost of your AI automations without sacrificing quality and intelligence. I will show you a simple technique called pre-filtering that you can use to optimize your own AI workflows. For example, with pre-filtering, I was able to reduce the cost of this AI marketing automation by 87% or the cost of this AI newsletter automation by 91%. For other automations, I was able to achieve cost reductions between 40 to 60%, so you will always be able to make some substantial improvements. So how did I come up with this? A few weeks ago, I was working on a new AI automation. In fact, I was working on this AI newsletter automation. And the way this works, it scans the internet for interesting articles. In this case, it scans a news website called Hacker News. And then the AI analyzes the articles to see if they're interesting enough and relevant enough to be included in my newsletter about AI and technology. And if that is the case, they will be saved to an Airtable database. So I built this automation, I created some really good prompts for it, I used the best AI models possible, and it actually started to work really well. The problem was, it also started to get quite expensive. See, if you want to build the best AI automations possible, then you also need to use the best AI models, so the smartest and the most intelligent ones. At the time of this video, this could be something like Google Gemini 2.5 Pro, Claude Opus 4, or maybe even GPT-5. But if you give very detailed prompts to these flagship models with lots of instructions, input and examples, then every single API request could cost you anywhere between 1 and 20 cents. That might not sound like a lot, but it quickly adds up. If you have lots of different AI automations and AI agents that run hundreds or even thousands of times per day, then this gets really expensive. So I somehow had to find a way to lower the cost while keeping the quality at that extremely high level. And then I came up with this idea called pre-filtering. And most likely I was not the first one to come up with this idea because it's an extremely simple idea. It's almost a naive idea, but it works incredibly well. See, most AI automations are structured in the following way. You have some type of input that could be a user input, a prompt or some data to analyze, some examples, instructions, etc. And then you take that input and pass it to an AI functionality. So that could be a very simple AI functionality uh, like an like a simple text prompt or something more advanced like an entire AI agent. And usually if you want to get the best results, you would want to use a high intelligence model, which also tends to be quite expensive. Then this AI functionality does what it does and generates some type of output. So this could be a result, a response, some type of text, media, images, videos, an evaluation or an assessment, things like that. And on a higher level, this is how most AI automations are structured. If we look at my AI newsletter automation from the beginning, we can also see that it works exactly in the same way. We receive some type of input. So in this case, we receive articles from a news website. Then we take that input and put it into an AI, which analyzes these articles. And then the AI produces some type of output. So an evaluation of the article, if it's interesting enough and relevant enough to be included in a newsletter. And then it takes that output and saves it to an Airtable database. Now, there's one area where this can be extremely wasteful, and that is with this input right here. See, this input does not require us to use the smartest and most intelligent models all the time. The smartest and most intelligent models are only required for a small percentage of the input for the hardest inputs, but for the majority of requests, a much less intelligent and thus less expensive model would also give you the exact same results. To give you a small analogy from the real world, let's say we have 10 random questions about geography then we do not need to hire a geography professor for all of these 10 questions. Because if you have 10 random questions about geography, most of them are going to be something like, what is the capital of Spain? And the geography professor would be completely overqualified for such a question. Instead, we could just go and ask a really smart high school student would give us the exact same answer as the geography professor. So that means for the majority of questions, the geography professor would be completely overqualified and only one or two of these questions, like for example, 
something like which country contains the antipodal point of its own capital. That sounds like a really difficult question. I don't even know what antipodal point means. Um, only there we would need the geography professor. But the real world data tends to be structured in a way that these harder inputs are usually only 10 to 20% of all inputs and the rest is something much easier. And the same thing goes on with our AI automations. In 80 to 90% of the cases, that high intelligence and expensive AI model is completely overqualified and a much cheaper model would also achieve the exact same results. If we take a look at my AI newsletter automation right here and look at all of the articles that it analyzes, then we can see a lot of these articles are obviously not going to be relevant for a newsletter about AI and technology. For example, Counter-Strike, a billion dollar game built in a dorm room, has obviously nothing to do with AI technology, which my newsletter is all about. Or electromechanical reshaping, an alternative to laser eye surgery, obviously has nothing to do with AI technology. Or a Croatian freediver held, held breath for 29 minutes, obviously not relevant. And it doesn't require a genius to recognize that, yet we are still using the genius models in our AI step. So you can see right here, I'm using Google Gemini 2.5 Pro to analyze all of the articles. But for most articles, as you could just see, this is completely overkill because it is obvious that they're not relevant. And here comes the very interesting and simple solution to that. What we're going to do is we're going to just add another step to our AI automations between the input and the AI functionality. And that step is going to be a pre-filter step, which is the red one right here. And the pre-filter step is just another call to an AI, but this time a much cheaper AI, a low to medium intelligence AI model instead of a high intelligence AI model. And the task of this pre-filter is to remove 70 to 90% of input elements. So that means, for example, with the articles, we will ask this cheap and low intelligence model, hey, please categorize all of the articles which are obviously not AI related and remove them from the input set. And only the remaining 10 to 30% we will pass on to the high intelligence, very expensive model that will then have much less work to do. That is the general idea. And in a few moments, I'm going to give you an exact calculation why this setup, this pre-filtering method leads to such huge cost savings. But now I quickly want to build this together with you here in N8N. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move the input a little bit over here and in between the input and the AI functionality, I'm going to add another block. I will add a block called basic LLM chain, which is your typical AI text prompt. So I switch this from connected chat trigger node to define below. And then here I can enter a user prompt and down here I can enter a system prompt. For the system prompt, I switch this to expression and I've already prepared a small system prompt here and I just paste it. I will also put that in the video description so you can use it yourself. And it's a very simple prompt because it's a quite a stupid model or low intelligent model. So I want to keep it simple. You are a content curation expert. Your task is to look at an article which I give you and you have to decide if the article's topic has something to do with AI and then respond with a analysis if it's AI related or not and then an explanation for that. And for the user prompt, I'm just going to pass in the article that we analyze. So here is the article title URL content and then I just drag in the individual data points from the previous step from the article step title URL and content and that's literally all we have to do to set up the pre-filter let's give it a name AI pre-filter then we have to add a model here in this case, I'm going to use Open Router, but you could also use Google Gemini here, uh, for example, or you could also use uh, OpenAI, uh, but I'm going to use Open Router. If you don't know what Open Router is, I actually recorded a video about this a week ago, and I will show it here on the screen, and there I show you how you can set it up. Basically, Open Router is a way to manage and use 
all available AI models through a single account, through a single API. That means you can quickly switch uh, between different models, even if they're from a different company. So for this pre-filter, I'm going to use a very affordable model called Gemini 2.5 Flash Lite, but you could also use something like GPT-5 uh, Mini or GPT-5 Nano. So 2.5 Flash Lite, very, very low cost model by Google, but still being quite intelligent. And I'm actually going to add an option here for the response format in JSON because that's what I asked in the prompt. Okay, so let's execute this and see what happens. Okay, now it runs. You can see it executes much quicker than the, the more expensive model as well. And now it has generated the data and has returned an evaluation for each individual article if it's related or not. And you can see already the majority here says, is AI related false? So all of them are going to be removed that are false. And to do that, I'm going to add another step here called a filter node. This is basic N8N. And then I just set a condition here. We only want to keep the articles where is AI related, Boolean is true. And if I execute this again, we can see it now only keeps eight of the 30 articles. So in this case, it almost removed 80% of the input. And this AI analysis here with the more expensive model who makes the actual decision if it wants to include something in the newsletter or not, if it's relevant and interesting enough to be included, only has to look at eight articles now instead of 30. And that's where the massive cost savings come from. So let's do an actual calculation of why this leads to such huge cost savings. So up here, we now have the typical setup how most AI automations are structured. Let's say on average per automation execution, we receive 100 inputs. So in our case, 100 input uh, articles that we want to analyze. And then for each input, we have to run the AI a single time. In this example, we used uh, the flagship model from Google, Gemini 2.5 Pro, which actually tends to be one of the more affordable high intelligence models. And if you give lots of detailed instructions to it and some examples, then on average, you could say that a single prompt will cost you a single cent. So that means the entire AI automation run with all of the inputs will cost you $1 every single time. Okay, now let's do the same calculation with the pre-filter. So here with the pre-filter, we also have to execute this pre-filter 100 times for each input so that it can analyze it but we're using a low to medium intelligence model. And these cheaper models usually tend to be uh, about 10% or one tenth of the price of the high intelligence models, which means here we can do the calculation with a tenth of a cent 100 times. And this means to execute this pre-filter for all of our inputs, we have to pay 10 cents. Now let's say this pre-filter removes 90% of the input which is definitely something you can achieve if you optimize your filtering prompt here. And uh, that means only 10%, so 10 of our input items will get passed on to the high intelligence and more expensive model. So here the calculation is, we have to run it on 10 remaining inputs. Each time it costs us one cent to run the high intelligence model. And this means this part of the automation also costs us 10 cents. That means if we add this together, so 10 cents plus 10 cents, the result is 20 cents. So we went from $1 per automation run to only 20 cents per automation run while keeping the exact same quality. And that is the amazing thing about pre-filtering. This setup here will give you the exact same results, but with a cost reduction of 80%, so $1 to 20 cents, which is pretty amazing. Now, there's one very important thing that you have to understand, otherwise this uh, will not work at all. And that is the key or the secret sauce to this pre-filtering is how you remove these 70 to 90% of input elements. And there are multiple ways to do that. So I call them elimination strategies that um, allow you to achieve this. So for example, what we did today is we did some type of categorization. So we categorized the input into articles which are AI related and articles which are not AI related and then removed the not AI related ones. But there are also other strategies that you could use, for example, the type of input. 
uh, let's say if there's a news article which asks a question or a news article uh, that is a job post or a hiring post, those are obviously not going to be relevant to the AI newsletter. So I could also use that as a elimination strategy. You could also check the sources of the input, or you could also in some cases very successfully check them for legitimacy. Let's say form submissions. You could tell the pre-filter to check if a form submission is using a dummy email and then by default remove all dummy email requests, something like that. But there is no one size fits all method right here. You have to adapt this pre-filter prompt and strategy depending on your individual use case because for each use case the input is going to be a little different. Additionally, I should mention that this pre-filter strategy is not going to work every single time. In some situations you have to adapt this a little bit because what we did right here we just removed 70 to 90 percent of the input and did not use that part of the input at all afterwards. But in some cases, you have to work with all of the input, not only the top 10 to 20%. So what you can do in these cases instead is you turn the pre-filter into a pre-routing. And this pre-routing then categorizes the input by difficulty and then takes the harder inputs to the high intelligence and expensive model. But the majority of inputs, the easier ones, it will send to a second AI model, which is a medium intelligence and more affordable model. And this way you will also be able to achieve big cost reductions without removing any of the inputs. And actually in one of my next videos, I'm going to show you how I built this automation here uh, from the ground up. So if you want to see how to build an entire automation with pre-filtering, then feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel because then you're going to be notified in a few days uh, once I upload this video. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike. Don't forget to like the video and I wish you a great day. Bye.